Hi, I'm Leila. Welcome back. Today we are going to look at watercolor and what can watercolor create on its own without the mixture of any helping instruments or additives. So we will look at things like creating washers, making your paint bleed or stopping it from bleeding, working wet on wet, um, wet on dry and so on. So it will be a really fun tutorial and you will be able to see a lot of different things I will explain as we go along. So please make sure to watch till the end so you don't miss out on any of the cool tips and tricks. Make sure you guys watch this till the end because after I explain all of these techniques I will do a little sketch where I will actually employ all of these techniques. So like a little follow along thing. Okay, so let's start. Let's talk about different watercolor application techniques. And today we're only going to talk about techniques that involve watercolor paint, paper, brushes and water. I'm not going to talk about any other additives. I will make separate special videos on that subject. If you would like to know a little bit more about watercolor materials and, you know, palettes and all sorts of other stuff, then I will link just in the corner there a video already created previously. So, what is watercolor? You can actually hear it in the name. Watercolor is pretty much colored water. And that's exactly how it should stay. Now, if you are using watercolor in a really thick way, in a kind of a way where you're actually slithering the paint onto your paper and you can see paint texture, that's the wrong way to use it. Make sure that it doesn't go further than just really dark water. So that's the darkest that you really should be using watercolor. If you tend to go thicker, then perhaps um, gouache is more of your medium. Also water mixable, also can be uh, brought back to life with addition of water, but you can apply that in a thick um, layer. With watercolor, what you want to do, if you've got a set like this, where you have your little dried up palettes, is you can start by adding a little bit of water onto all the colors, just tiny little bit. And what this will do is it will soften it up for you. So when you go to pick up and if you need more of an intense color, you know, it'll pick up much quicker and faster. Okay, now that all of them are done, let's get into the different ways um, of how you can use your watercolor in the correct way. For example, if you compare it to acrylics, acrylics you've got your paint of white and say a paint of red. So if you want to create pink, you combine the two colors together in the amount that you, you know, to achieve the desired color. It doesn't work like this with watercolor. With watercolor, your white is the whiteness of your paper. At least that's the traditional way of using it. You do get usually a little, you know, sort of a tube of white in your um, watercolor set, but that is usually to cover up little bits, say, if you've gone over them. Uh, remember, this is not something that, oh, you know, don't ever do this. I mean, there's a lot of mixed media and people use watercolor together with acrylics and all sorts of things. I'm only talking about the more of a traditional way of using watercolor. So first and foremost, let's go into something that is usually referred to as washes or gradient or you know things like that so what does that include it's one of the wet on wet paint application techniques so what happens you take your clean brush and you moisten the area that you want to work on say i only want to work on this uh, if you're working on the larger piece of paper for example and like you want to create sky or you want to create a very even color then that's the perfect technique to use so once you've applied your water then you make sure that you've got a really moist brush and you pick up some blue and start to apply it now what does that do that just having that paper quite moist stops you from getting streaks so something like this and especially if that dries you will have really hard time getting rid of the outline so doing something like this
can help you achieve a really even tone, especially if you're working on something large, right? Something small like this, this is just an example, but if you're working on something large, this technique is like one of the important techniques of using watercolor. This would be like a wet on wet wash. What do I mean by gradient? You can create gradients of, again, if you're painting sky, for example, you know, the sky is darker on the top and it gets lighter towards the bottom. So you see how I can pretty much really softly push it into that paper. And you see how the more paint I use, the darker the color is, the more water I use, the more paper comes through, the lighter the color uh, appears. One more thing to remember with watercolor, and that's especially for people who have been using acrylics a lot, for example, or oils, and then go into watercolor, is that when watercolor dries, it becomes lighter in color. So wh whatever you see when it's wet, it's darker, more intense. When it dries, it becomes lighter. Uh, pretty much the opposite of acrylics, that acrylics, when they dry, they become darker, and oils, they stay pretty much the same. There isn't any noticeable difference that you would get. So see, I can add more and more of the dark color, especially while the, you know, while everything is still moist and you can keep building it up. And at this stage, I'm, I'm still using that same blue. I'm not even introducing any other colors. Now, let's see, we've got this, and this is just one color which you can say called, um, you know, like a washing gradient or whatever, but there's nothing to actually stop you from introducing other colors um, with it as well. So what I'll do is I'll grab a little bit of green and while this is still, still moist, you can introduce another color and you can wash it out or you can leave it more um, visible. It's up to you. But yeah, this is, this is just, you know, this is just something to, that you can play with. Let's have a look at another technique and this is more of a useful tip. So I'll grab a paper towel and I want to show you something where you don't really get an eraser with watercolor. Well, there'll be other things that I'll be talking about in another video. But if you, if you want to get rid of an area, for example, and make it lighter, number one, it'll be very hard to get it to the white paper. And you also want to try and do this while it is wet. So let's have a look at this, for example. So I've got a very clean brush. What you want to do first is give the brush a wash, right? Just to make sure that you don't get, you don't have any of the other colors on it and then dry it really well. And then you can go in and you can absorb the water. Now, if that didn't give you enough of the lift, what you can do is you can again go in and wash your brush and apply a little bit of water, clean water this time onto the paper, absorb all the water from your brush again. See, it's like dry and it's all like this. So that's perfect for this. And then reabsorb it again. So see, this is like turning out into a little, a little cloud kind of. But that's the technique that you can use. And as I said, it's with this technique, it's really hard to get it to, you know, the white of the paper, but you can see how much it's lifted off. It's a little bit harder to do when the paint is dry. It means that you need to apply more water, maybe even sort of like push it around a little bit and then um, pull it off. But there are other techniques as well. So please make sure to subscribe because I'll be doing other videos on how you can erase dry watercolor as well. Okay, so next technique that I wanted to show you is bleeding effect. Again, very, very common technique. And again, I'll just moisten a little area on my piece of paper. By the way, if you're trying to create washes on larger scale works, make sure you use larger brushes, you know, like this. If you're interested you know, in brushes and different things, um, I'm just leaving a link in the corner there so you can watch something if you're, if you're interested. Okay, so let's go with this one. So for bleeding, again, we've got a very moist area and we are using a reasonably runny paint as well. And just applying, I'll do it with different colors so it's more obvious. I'll go for ochre. Okay. 
you can use more moisture or less moisture depending on the look you're trying to achieve and you can also play with things like that by see I'll, I'll add a little bit more of the denser color and you can also play with it by either leaving it flat to dry or by tipping it and you can can you see how the paint runs you can play with it even more and add let's go back for purple and actually add you know so almost like specific drips you know something um, that you want gravity to have a go at you know which can be a really cool effect as well especially like imagine if you're working on these um, you know like snowy landscapes and things like that or you know there's just just so many different things that you can use these techniques so this is bleeding where you just let the paint bleed you, you know you you don't really have much of control over it so there's quite a bit of chaos going on here but you can give it a bit of a direction if you want to now as you can see brushes are very important in watercolor so if you would like to know about how to choose brushes specific for what you're doing and also how to choose best quality brushes as well when you are in the shop um, there are lots of tricks for that as well i already have a video about this on my patreon so please make sure to check that out we are just for eight dollars a month you will be able to see all the extra videos um, that are full of new tips and tricks that i don't post here on youtube now let's talk about another technique and that is pulling so it's again it's like an evolution of this one but here we've got a little bit more control because we only work on a specific area so if this is a large area for example imagine and you're creating all of this here with pulling you can create a really beautiful oh, there's a bit of purple on my brush still you can create very beautiful floral effects and and things like that if you need to this is where you only cover a specific area of paper with water quite a bit of water so like creating little pools you know of water and then adding color into those pools and that doesn't actually have to be water that can already be you know it can have a little bit of paint in there already so let's go for this one you can somewhat control the areas that you want to be more denser and areas that you want to be more loose but there is still a lot of chaos in this technique and it's really hard to have full and total control so this is very very organic very natural and this is of course what it is perfect for you know those natural beautiful organic shapes that are actually quite hard to achieve you know with just trying to paint them um, and let's go for maybe some yellow and sometimes when you paint your paint can so we build up other colors on it but again that's not a problem you just need to clean it up and wipe it off a bit and it's good to go so i'm just adding a bit of yellow on the side there so you can see how say if this was something in particular you know if this was something you wanted to work on like you know a flower or something like that that could work quite well and you just you just you know pop some on there and then just let the water do the rest of the work so this is a pooling technique all of these techniques are really good you just need to make sure that you use them in the right um, in the right time you know if you want something like this make sure that's exactly what you go for another sort of a, a basic technique as well is of course using semi runny paints or something like 
Well, I don't want to say dry on dry because, you know, watercolor is still moist, it's still wet, but it's not very runny, you're not using a large brush. When is this technique? So what's the perfect time to use that technique? And that's mainly for details and things like that. So, for example, if you've got something like this, that's already dry, you can introduce that or you can even work on white paper as well and you can create, you know, whatever techniques that you need, um, maybe, you know, some specific areas that you want to um, add texture to, for instance, uh, maybe some shadows. And you can do that in layers. So, for example, with something like this. And what I will do is make sure you guys watch this till the end. Because after I explain all of these techniques, I will do a little sketch where I will actually employ all of these techniques. So, like a little follow along thing. So, for example, you see how I've got this here. And then maybe you might like to, you know, add just a little bit more definition for example and you need to make sure that it's dry because if it's wet you're going to get that effect okay so this is working on dry um, which again i pretty much use in almost all of my um, works and at any time you know your work doesn't just have to be one or the other you can combine all of them and that's where you get the most you know to have the most fun so see now here i'm going to add a little bit more of the um, warmer color and let that run through and say here I can do this okay so these are the techniques the main techniques that most people who use watercolor use um, they are quite basic but they are very important to know and you can always experiment I mean you can go as crazy as you want and as I said I will be doing more tutorials where I'll show you how to use other ingredients with watercolor to create even stranger effects. Okay, and now let's move on to the second part of this tutorial. And what I'm going to show you is I'm actually going to show you how you can use all of these techniques in a little artwork. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's a really well known um, technique. And that's using masking tape to create very nice clean edges and while I'm doing this, I will tell you a little bit about um, watercolor itself. So watercolor is one of the really old mediums, you know, together pretty much with uh, tempera, egg tempera and things like that. It's been around for centuries and thousands of years. Um, but it sort of has never really been, um, you know, it's never really had the first place for being the most important um, art medium uh, which is a shame really because it's a beautiful fun medium to use but predominantly it would be used for preliminary artworks so like for example you're planning to create an oil painting but you want to work out a composition and color and you would do that by using um, watercolor it was also popular in um, you know a couple of hundred years ago as well you know where it was considered to be a very feminine material to use so it was meant to be more of a material for painting fruits and flowers for you know young girls that were sitting around waiting you know to get married um, so again it was not considered to be one of the really um, ambitious sort of mediums to use you know unlike oils or I don't know, even acrylics these days, uh, I think, are looked at more seriously than watercolor. Again, it's a shame that that's the case. But there was time, and that was mainly in the 18th century, that watercolor became extremely popular. Artists were bragging how good they were with watercolor. And the reason for this was that people, you know, richer people, could afford to travel and it became more comfortable as well because traveling previously was a very hard thing to do and but the photography was not invented or it was in the beginning stages you know and it would take many hours to create a photograph so people who would travel would actually hire a watercolor artist to go along with them 
and pretty much sketch things that they liked. So like say for example nowadays you would go somewhere and you take a selfie or a photograph you know of I don't know Niagara Falls or you know wherever you go into um, you know sightseeing or something like that. Back then an artist would come along and um, I would be told to sit down and sketch this and because watercolor is so versatile in terms of it's so easy to take with you you know and it dries so quickly and you don't need a whole lot of equipment and you can use water with it um, it was so easy to take and very quickly to sketch and a lot of the times you know an artist would sketch a very rough sketch for 15 minutes and then finish it off indoors but yeah that was a real big time for watercolor but then once photography became better and more convenient again watercolor moved to the background okay so let's work on this now i'm going to do a little quick sketch of a um, sort of a, like a hazy kind of a forest scene and what i'm going to do first is i'm going to use um, a little bit of this first technique that we tried and that was um, just creating this wash pretty much i'm not going to use too much water just really softly with a brush again this is this this size brush is perfect for this size um, artwork because it's tiny but if you are working on something larger then you can use a larger brush or even a piece of cloth that um, whoop, here a piece of cloth just make sure it's clean that can do the same job okay so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a really hazy effect a really sort of a soft very hazy effect so for that I'm going to use a little bit of green and a little bit of black in a really soft way so I'm just going to add a bit of purple in there as well, as well to cancel out the greeniness of the green so at this stage it's really really soft and there isn't much that's going on I'm just creating that backdrop also with watercolor you always want to try and work uh, with lighter colors to darker colors because unlike other mediums that you might be more used to working with um, you can't paint over it so um, it's really hard to add white. I mean, you can in some details, but it will still show. You can see that it's a different texture and color from the paper. So the best way to do things like that is to is to keep building it up slowly. Now, what I've done here is I've turned off the camera and I just waited a little bit for it to dry. It's not dry, it's still very moist, but it doesn't have the, you know, those pools of, um, of water. Okay, next I'm going to use a smaller brush and um, I'm going to add a shade that's just a little bit more intense, so to intensify some of the... Um, some of the colors so again this is still very very hazy a bit more purple and with watercolor you really do want to create things when the moist level is just right um, most of the mistakes or struggles even not mistakes as struggles that I find my students have is when the paper is just not the right 
you know, doesn't have the right moist level. So, for example, moistness level. So, for example, if you are working on the paper that's too dry, you're not going to get that sort of a softening, you know, bleeding effect, which is what's going on here now. This is a bleeding effect. Um, or technique. It's probably more of a technique than an effect. Or if you are trying to create a lot of detail on a very on a very um, moist paper as well, everything just keeps bleeding and becoming sort of a fuzzy when you want things to be really dense and very sharp and you know. So yeah, you need to just make sure that you're doing you're going on the right um, to purple. work and you can see how the paper I don't know if it's visible on the camera but the paper is sort of like bubbling a little bit it's a good you know reasonably good watercolor paper that I'm using here it's not extra heavy but I think it's about 250 grams again please watch my video if you don't know what it is but would like to find out um, about um, using using different types of paper for your watercolor and another really sort of a hazy one in the back now there are ways to diminish this and one of them is by stretching your watercolor paper I personally don't like doing that because it takes so much time and for me it never worked 100 percent i mean yes of course it gets your paper a little bit better but i've got another technique of how to smooth your work after it's done and i will share it in my next watercolor video okay so a couple of more of these ghostly trees in the fog and then I think I can leave it to dry and a little bit more and start working on denser colors okay so I'm back with this um, now the paper is still moist but there is no surface water on there which means that if i want really perfect tiny little details it'll still be quite hard to get it um, but it will help me if i need to still you know like spread some some color around so now i'm going to create um, these somewhat darker um, ghostly trees you know trees that are a little bit closer to us And remember, when watercolor dries, it dries lighter. So if you look at the color and you think, oh, that's a bit too dark, it'll change. Whenever you're working on any shape, um, you need to make sure that you're going for the overall main shape. And only then move on to the details same as with drawing if you watched any of my drawing and follow along the graphite follow along tutorials it's the same principle everywhere you want to work with the hazier softer things first and then you can go on to the darker and more detail more contrasted Object and subject. So here we've got a couple of trees. You see, this is quite moist, so the paint spreads quite a bit. 
here which is just perfect for me for what I'm trying to do with this one let's add another tree okay so next I'm going to go for trees that are even darker so and probably a bit more greeny as well although I'll still add some the whole thing is very sort of a cool and really washed out so now I'm going to blend this in so you see this area here is already dry and that's why I'm I'm getting this sharper line so to do to to deal with that what you can do is you can dry your brush and then really softly I actually need to wash it before as well um, and then just really softly you know blend that in which is absolutely fine when you're working on something small like this but when you're working on a large uh, artwork it can be a bit tricky Now, even if you work with a lot of detail, make sure you don't get into the detail too early um, as well. You need to prep, you know, you need to prep the specific amount of layers before you can go into the detail. And now again I'm going to leave this to dry for a little bit more because this is just a little bit too moist unless maybe I just add a few shadows on the bottom. And things that are closer to us they appear a bit warmer in color. Um, I, I do need to make a video for you guys on aerial perspective where you know I can explain exactly why it happens. There again I gave it a little bit of a rest maybe 10 minutes or so and now I'm going to go into the even more of an intense um, color and create some of the branches of the trees that are quite nearby you know where a bit more detail is visible because for me this is not any specific picture you know that I really needed to stay true to it's not any particular forest I'm just using that photograph for inspiration 
um, but if you are working on something very specific you can always sketch your main shapes in pencil before you start painting And let's add more trees that are a little bit darker. Or even a little one there, maybe. This one a bit taller. And another one there. Can even use a bit of brown. But again, mixed up with the purple and the green. And the black too. And on the photo, they seem to get darker as it goes into the bottom. I guess more shadows from the trees blocking out the light. And the big one on the side. as it goes down same as with the other ones it gets a bit darker so you see it's quite an intense rich color but still it's water it's just really dark water it's not thick paint as I said before you don't want to get into the thick paint category So now, at this stage, it's pretty much done. What I will do is I will leave that to dry so that then I can go in and um, add some final details, you know, details that I don't want to blur out, the details that I want to be quite intense. And now I'm going to use the other technique that I showed you, you know, the one of um, erasing the paint while it's damp. Um, I don't really need to do it, but I, I just wanted to add that in. So you see, I washed my brush, I dried it really well, and then you can go in and lighten some of the areas up if you need to. And especially now that it's been maybe a couple of more minutes, you know, the paint, even though it's still damp, it's not too runny. So I can create these highlighted little branches. So again, that in, you know, involves washing the brush, drying it well, and then doing that to another one. Maybe do that in some areas.
okay and now that again I gave it another five minutes um, to sort of set again it's not dry if I touch it I'll probably leave fingerprints but um, I think it is definitely ready to include more details in okay so now I'm going for again same thing black green and purple together and I'm just going, going to add some extra dark branches you know that might pop up here and there just for that extra contrast so a couple more here this is probably the most intense that I would ever use watercolor I think if you go any thicker that's when it stops being a watercolor and also another negative thing when, when you when you use watercolor in a really thick way it can't dry properly just because of the kind of binders you know that are there and when you have to put your work well say if you're working on the pad and you close that the other sheet of the paper will actually stick to it because it, it stays sticky um, so again if you like to th work with thick paint and still have it water mixable perhaps you need to um, try out the um, gouache So here I'm not going too strong, but I am adding a little bit more definition to that little tiny little Christmas tree. Okay, now I'm going in for the detail of a different color so I'm going to use some brown I can see it in here and some more definition around this corner as well because this corner I think is quite dark and it's quite nice because it sort of balances this side out as well And remember watercolor is a very interesting medium just like all the other media as well you can have your own specific way that you like to use it you know a lot of people I know love to use it in a really sketchy way like really really big kind of like this and then use like an ink pen or you know feather with ink to add the definition so that's one way of doing that it's almost like you know like book illustration kind of a style and some people use it really really sketchy very light colors like they'd never use colors as intense as this you know everything is almost you know same level just by using say warmer and cooler shades they can show the shadow and the and the light so there are lots of different ways to do this um, it's ex you know, just through experimenting and maybe following along to a few different tutorials you can find your own way you can find the one that seems the most natural to you or you enjoy the most perhaps I do like contrast in art myself, so lots of things that I work on have quite a bit of contrast. And also things that are closer to us are also um, a little bit sharper, you know, you can see more detail in them. 
just because they are closer. I need to wait for this to dry. I'm getting a bit impatient. <laughs> I keep working on this and working on this. Okay, it's really getting there now. I can I can probably at this stage even say that that's that. But what I want to do is I want to introduce a few lighter branches. I know it's not in the photo, but just a few lighter branches. So you see again, this is that technique that I showed you of Washing your brush, drying it really well, and then going in to remove the paint. Again, it works well if you don't want it to get white. And it works well if your paint is still damp. Because if it's dry, you won't get the same effect. And now because obviously this little tree, or maybe it's a big tree, just your branches are showing, is closer, I'm actually going to um, add more of a warmer color. So a little bit of the warmer green, not too much, just a tiny little bit there just to make the whole scene even more foresty. And Okay, so now this is it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to dry so I can remove the masking tape. Okay. Okay, so um, it's still a little bit moist over here, but I, honestly, I, I just can't wait. Um, so I want to get this tape off. And now um, just to recap a little bit. Remember, you can use masking tape to create really nice straight um, edges in your artwork. Just make sure that you use the softer kind, the one that doesn't stick to paper too much. And um, you can use techniques like, you know, that include washes. So adding moisture to the paper and then working with wet or moist paint um, in a specific way or letting it run you know like in the, uh, creating more chaos and bleeding techniques or um, pooling techniques as well remember when you create a little pool of water and then adding a bit more color for some extra chaos and then you can use a brush or a um, pencil or anything like this and you can sign it and that's your little piece and make sure to watch my other videos because I will show you some other tricks that you can use when you are using watercolor um, and some sort of a hex as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you give it thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell. And as always, thank you so much for painting with me guys. <laughs>